have in the studio Theophilos Elama, and we'll be doing this with our, our guest, a public affairs analyst, Olade Indiario. Good morning. Good morning. Thank How you for you? joining us on TVC <laughs> Breakfast. I hope you didn't find traffic or no, it wasn't no, difficult it was for you getting today. down here this morning. There was no rain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's head straight to the papers, and I begin with uh, the news direct. Court remands to Britain say in prison custody over $9.6 billion PNID scam. And to the front page of the Daily Trust, Kogi Deputy Governorship Outrage as Honor Jerry places at Chuba. It's illegal, NBA National Assembly PDP caucus says. To the front page of the Daily Times, insurgency, federal government to procure fighter helicopters from Russia presidency. To unveil details of the procurement exercise in due course, bandits displace 17 villages in Kaduna as 2,000 villagers flee homes. We'll be looking at that story shortly. And on the front page of the blueprint, federal government to Russian investors, Buhari has demonstrated resolve to diversify economy. Nigeria will procure more fighter copters from Russia presidency. Igbo monarchs thumbs up PMB on Enugu Airport. All right, we'll take the stories from the headlines from the This Day newspaper. It says here, in brazen assault on the Constitution, Kogi swears in new deputy governor. Uh, the Vanguard is saying here, uh, killing banditry, farmers heard a clash, uh, shot borders against alien herdsmen. Or Tom tells federal government, and the writer says, Hanese, a Feni Ferry, ACF, CAN, PDP, MBF, PANDEF, others in support. Arrest criminals posing as herdsmen. Northern leaders urge security agencies. That's in the Vanguard newspaper this morning. Now the Daily Sun says Saraki to forfeit property to federal government. The writer says court gives EFCC nod to seize ex-Senate President's Ikoyi houses. Commission misled court, says Saraki. That's in the Daily Sun newspaper this morning. I guess that makes uh, the, that's the final newspaper headline yes. that we'll be looking at. All right, we can head straight to the front page of the Daily Times now, talking about insurgency and the, pre uh, the presidency saying that uh, the federal government is ready to procure more fighter helicopters from Russia in the fight against insurgency. Remember that uh, we, the presidency, once said that, uh, not once, we said we are going to buy 12 uh, Tucano fighter jets from the U.S. From the US. Yeah. We are We've yet, paid for them. yes, we have paid for them. Yeah. We are yet to receive that and we are uh, buying more uh, of this now. I wonder how this comes to you. What yeah. does he uh, change in the mix or in our fight against insurgency? Um, during the first coming of President Buhari, the same Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, announced gleefully to us that the insurgents have been annihilated. Mm. And in my understanding, they effectively, they in my understanding of English language, <laughs> said it to go by, when a body is annihilated, it means they've been completely destroyed with no hope of ever coming up again. Now, we had paid for some aircraft, fighter aircraft from I mean, the US. US, they are not here yet. He still went on to say it yesterday during the media parley uh, that we have annihilated Boko Haram. The question is, why it to be so? Why, why are we, we now paying for helicopters from Russia, Russia again? But you can't add up these things. You are left the more confused. Uh, but don't forget that uh, the president, uh, during his speech, uh, at, uh, on June 12th, he talked about the issues of uh, kidnapping and banditry. So perhaps those are the activities we are trying to use oh, this well, to it, check. Well, perhaps you have given a good excuse now. I will say reason. <laughs> yes, because um, we are now. I am not playing the devil's advocate, <laughs> but I remember <laughs> that, that statement was that made by the president. Bandits, kidnappers, they operate. I mean, for now, we know where they operate and how they operate. If in government's wisdom, they think that's what they require to counter you know, them, well, maybe we give it to them. But I still think they need a lot more to do in the area of intelligence gathering mm. as against... Don't we have that at this point? Because yeah, we, we always we, see... We, we have not done well in the area of intelligence gathering. Cardinal State today is a sore point. 17 communities are just been taken over by bandits. Mm. That will tell you that that end is not doing well. Because if we have information 
either overtly or covertly, who, our armed forces, our police, to, or the fighters. Who's going to volunteer information? Do you expect the people to volunteer information people and their lives to be in danger? People ordinarily volunteer information where there is a buy-in okay. by the agencies. You know, what I mean buy-in is they must buy their confidence. Mm. As soon as we are buy, you will give information and then you now become a victim. Nobody will talk. Mm. How is that complicating this fight? Oh, well, it's making it a lot more difficult because without information, nothing can be achieved. The bulk of any, of any intelligence, I mean, any operational activity, either counter, pro, or pre, is information. Mm. When you don't have information, how do you go? Mm. To be a blind walk in the alley. And, of course, when that happens, you get lost. Mm. So, in essence, uh, this procurement is, is, it's, is, it's, is it's not it's necessary. necessary. It's, well, let's say it's necessary, but you see, you don't put the cart before the horse. It's the information that they, will, they, that they need before they can even say, aircraft, fly this direction, or go and attack. Well, we have the information, we don't have the we, aircraft, we, we don't we have the facilities. We don't, it's I mean, it's not going to be, it's not going to be any helpful, mm. okay? All so right. They All should right. go back, identify where the disconnect between the people and the armed forces yes. came off. And, and that will, will be the beginning of uh, our solution. Success, yes. All right, success. Regard. All right. Take a look at stories making the headlines in Nigerian newspapers. I have with me in the studio a journalist, Charles Ideho, and public affairs analyst, Oladende Ario. Thank, Thank you, you very much for joining Thank us. You. Thank morning. you. Morning. Thank you. All right, so we'll take our stories in the newspapers this morning. The News Direct says court remains two Britons in prison over uh, in prison custody over 9.6 billion dollars p and id scam the daily trust is saying a kogi deputy governorship uh, outrage as on not replaces a chuba it's illegal nba national assembly pdp caucus says that's in the daily uh, trust this morning the daily times is saying federal government to procure fighter helicopter from russia as according to the presidency and the rider is here says um to unveil details of the procurement exercise in due course, bandits displaced 17 villages in Kaduna as 2,000 villagers flee homes. That's in the Daily Times. We move to this day newspapers this morning. It says here, in brazen assault on the Constitution, Kogi swears in new deputy governor. That's in this day newspaper. And, of course, we will move to... Uh, the daily uh, blueprints as well. It says federal government to Russian investors. Buhari has demonstrated resolve to diversify economy. Uh, Nigeria will procure more fighter copters from Russia, says presidency. Igbo monarchs thumb up PMB in Enugu airport of on uh, Enugu airport rather. We we'll move to the Vanguard newspaper. It says here shut borders against alien headsmen. Or Tom tells federal government. Now that's against the backdrop of killings, uh, killings, banditry, farmers, herders, clashes in the state. The Daily Sun is saying here, Saraki to forfeit property to federal government. The writer says court gives EFCC not to seize ex-Senate President Ikui houses. Commission misled court, says Saraki. That's in the Daily Sun newspaper this morning. And we'll stick with the story in the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper. It says Kogi deputy governorship. Outrage as Onoja replaces Achuba. It's illegal, says the NBA National Assembly PDP caucus. That's a co that's the uh, Daily Trust newspaper this morning. So, gentlemen, let's talk about this. Uh, yesterday, Onoja was um, sworn in as the deputy governor of Kogi State after the former deputy governor uh, was impeached. Well, um, the, the the worst lie you can ever believe. Is that democracy is going to be people for the people by the people? Why? Because the people of Kogi they have no input in what they did yesterday. It was a charity, a complete illegality. The process, as known to the constitution, says uh, a committee must be f set up to probe and investigate allegations against the deputy governor. Okay. The state CJ raised a panel who, I mean, that investigated the governor and gave him a clean bill. He wasn't found guilty of okay. any misdemeanor or offense. Unfortunately, it was the same CJ that went on to swear in his replacement. 
So where lies the division of powers? Tell me there was no collusion between the executive and judiciary that brought about this anomaly. So the question, why will the judiciary give him a clean bill of health? And on, the, one, on, one on one side, on one side, on another side, you go ahead now swear in his replacement. That question best comes, and I'm glad that there has been massive reaction opposing what they did. Uh, it might end up in court. Unfortunately, again, <laughs> it should be at the behest of the same judiciary, which has not been found complicit to still take a decision. Charles. Well, let me play Honorable Patrick of Bayhambo this morning. <laughs> and I'm sure if you ask him, he will say, what took place in Kogi yesterday is uh, a travesty of a calculable discombobulation. Jesus. Okay. Yes. <laughs> let me just uh, pretend like I understood what you just yes. said. That, that is, uh -huh. it's a travesty. So let's it's, move on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a travesty because when you, if you look at the, in the eye of the law, um, there is no vacancy in that position of the deputy governor. governor. Mm -hmm. There's no vacancy. Because when, I'm not a lawyer, but we are journalists. I mean, we are supposed to know a little about everything and everything about little things. That's how we are taught. Now, when you look at the Constitution, sessions, Section 188, Subsection 8, it says that if a panel has been set up and the panel has submitted its report over an allegation, maybe there's an allegation raised against a public uh, office holder, and then a panel has been set up, the panel will now do its finding. When they submit a report and they have not found that person guilty, it's, and the, 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 the law especially says that, no further action is required in that matter. So what does it mean in law? So in the eye of the law, uh, Achuba has not done anything wrong. The allegations that were raised against him were false because he was given, as uh, uh, he said, he was given a, plea, a clean uh, bill, uh, 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 he was given a clean slate totally. So by the time you now, when you now go back and you now, now pick somebody, the chief of staff, to now replace him, as we speak, in the air of the law, you have two deputy Go governors in, in, in the, in the, in the Kogi state. So it's, it's a travesty that must not be allowed to stand. It is also, also a shame and a disgrace in a, in a, in a, in a jurisprudence, in, the, in fact, in, in a judiciary that even judiciary is even allow, allowing itself to be used by the, by the executive to further, to, to, further, to further illegality. Okay, so so how, how do we grow? How do we grow a democracy like this? So this is happening close to the elections uh, in exactly. I mean, so that's it. Yes. What if the if um, Simon Achuba is to sue? Uh, does he have a case here, and how far can he go? No, he has a case because it now. he would he rely on that. He would rely on that. He would rely on he sues or if he sues, yeah, exactly. He's the same judiciary now that will have to preside over his case. So well, it may not be because be in that case, in that case, the team the team will now go higher because. If, uh, involving this case about uh, the the the, um, the state government, the case they might even go for appeal directly. Okay. 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 So what I'm saying first is that if I and mean, we were going, to, the law is going to rely on that section 188, subsection 8. That's we speak. I'm not sure. I mean, the letter of the, the letters of the law are very clear for everybody to see. Mm. There was no vacancy in that position before they brought uh, uh, Onoja in. Okay. So when you look at in the eye of the law, as I say, I'm going to restate this. There are two deputy governors in Kogi State, so and my, that is against. I would say one legal, the other illegal. What are legal? But and exactly. there are two. That's I what mean, the law recognizes. So now. why, why that he was sworn in has not done anything to legalize his anything. office as deputy governor? I mean the other guy anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's an illegal thing, and uh, I'm sure common sense would not allow it to stand. But why? Why didn't the state house of assembly? react to this or stop this swearing. It's obvious that they have been manipulated. I mean, let's not beat about the bush in all of these things. It's obvious because they were, they were not uh, out of the city when these things were taking place. They also got a report of the panel yeah. that was set up to investigate Achuba. So where, on what are they relying to have now cleared Onoja as being competent enough to be deputy governor? Considering the fact that the president, I mean, the sitting deputy governor, wasn't guilty of any misdemeanor. No. Okay, the elections are here. Does it affect anything? It's not impossible. No, it's, it, well, it might not because uh, the election will run party fasu. 
even if the man goes to court, there's no way it's going to affect because uh, if 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 they could if they could use the judiciary to to perpetrate this now, it might make, um, what what does it take for them to start <laughs> to that uh, adjoining cases? It's cases. just another page. So of that's what's going to happen. So, but I think uh, it's, it's something we should not allow to stand to, to stand because it might it, it happened in Kogi today, and we allow it to stand. That again, we have set a very bad precedent in our national life. Okay, that. But if you want to quote law, if you want to quote law, the extant law, you should quote the one that is supposed to help build our, 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 the polity. Well, not the one that is saying uh, uh, this is retrogressive. This is under your state of Adejibu. Exactly. Where, remember where that? A, I mean, small number of people in the House of Assembly impeach the governor. So, so the minority impeach the governor. I mean, and, and of course, they had their way uh, until uh, the uh, man uh, went to court and was restored. But doing these things, we're not growing our democracy. We're not growing our democracy. Mm. And we're, we're not helping ourselves. Because right now, there is rancor and crisis in Kogi State. And when there is rancor and crisis, there can't be good and development. Right. The losers, at the end of the day, are the people, the people of Kogi State. Let's to the papers now, and I begin with the, the news direct. Court remands two Britons in prison custody over $9.6 billion PNID scam. And to the front page of the Daily Trust, Kogi Deputy Governorship outrage as Onoja replaces Achuba, its illegal NBA National Assembly PDP caucus says. And to the front page of the Daily Times, insurgency, federal government to procure fighter helicopters from Russia, presidency. To unveil details of the procurement exercise in due course, bandits display 17 villages in Kaduna as 2,000 villagers flee homes. I will move to the blueprint now. Federal government to Russian investors. Buhari has demonstrated resolve to diversify economy. Nigeria will procure more fighter copters from Russia presidency. Igbo Monarchs thumbs up uh, PMB on Enugu Airport. To the front page of this day newspaper, embracing assault on the constitution, Kogi swears in new deputy governor. And on the front page of the Vanguard, killings, banditry, farmers, heather clashes, shut borders against alien herdsmen, or Tom tells federal government. Ohaneze, Afeni Ferry, ACEF, CAN, PDP, MBF, PANDEF, others in support, arrest criminals posing as herdsmen. Northern leaders urge security agencies. And finally, on the front page of the Daily Sun, Saraki to forfeit property to federal government. Court gives EFCC now to seize external presidency Kui houses. Commission misled court, Saraki. All right, gentlemen, we'll look at this story that has to uh, do with the issues of insecurity, killings, mandatory farmers headed on the front page of the Vanguard. Shot borders against alien headsmen on Tommy Stelling, the federal government. But some would say that... The borders are already shot, Charles. I mean, well, the borders are already shot, but um, they're shot against uh, the incoming uh, for uh, against goods and uh, and what or what not. But it's not uh, particularly against uh, this human, uh, traffic. Uh, uh, human traffic and all that. But then, so, one of the reasons yes. that the government gave at the time, one of the major reasons, was to check issues of insecurity. Insecure, but the headsmen they are not being seen as as. Uh, in that light, mm. because it's been as uh, I just said before we came on air, that in most cases when you mention the issue of uh, uh, the movement of uh, headers, it's always uh, politicized. Because as you're also looking at it now, that the headers should not uh, be allowed to come in now. Not all headers, but the foreign headers. So we must underline that. <laughs> How do you differentiate between? Well, well, we I, the security agency does their job to mm. to be able to do that. But there are people who are at the borders who are trained as uh, immigration officers, and they should, they should be able to know those things. It's not my job. I'm a journalist my own to, to report <laughs> or to analyze. <laughs> so what I'm saying first is that, yes, if we want to contain the issue of security, also to arrest it, we need to put down this measure, even if it is going to be uh, uh, a stopgap. Because if you look at countries all over the world, yeah. when, they have, when they have a challenge, they look for a mayor to arrest the challenge. Mm. So, and then look at uh, even in, uh, is, in Senegal, Senegal that is predominantly Muslim, when they saw that their pocket could no longer carry it by, by camera legislature, they, they, they look for a solution to make it in camera. Absolutely. So, and then there was a time they also had insecurity problem 
they have to ban the use of uh, hijab. You know, hijab is yes. very dear to the heart of the Muslim. Absolutely. So, but that's a Muslim country. They say, okay, they were going to ban hijab. But if you bring that into, into Nigeria, it's going to also yes, be politicized. Be yes. So, for now, we, we must also identify that we are faced with, uh, we are buffeted from the, from the world, from north and everywhere. So, if we must be able to contain this insecurity, to arrest it, to at least a, to a minimum level, I think the, the issue of, of uh, that what uh, uh, Otong has said, yeah. that has to be looked at uh, critically. I, I wonder how this will check the activities of insecurity. We know FEMA had as clashes, but how will this really resolve those issues? You know, Benue is a peculiar state. Mm. In his first term, I remember Governor Otong wrote to the presidency informing of incident attacks by headsmen uh, and requesting for assistance. Mm -hmm. When that was not forthcoming, he went on. It was the first state to enact the law banning yes. open grazing. Yes. Uh, if not for the political angle amplified then, if he had been given the necessary security support, perhaps we would have been able to tackle and put his stop permanently to uh, headsmen, farmers attack. But didn't happen. He nearly lost his re-election yeah. if you remember. Yeah. Of that. Now, what he has said makes a lot of sense to me. Really? You know, yeah, because the foreign uh, headsmen have no identity. They are faceless. They commit atrocities and they go away. They, they don't get punished for it. Remember, Benu is the food battle of Nigeria, mm. where we get a lot of our food. Now, with the state of things in, in, in farming in that place, um, it has had great negative impact on the value of food mm. in other parts of Nigeria. Food security has been threatened. And, exactly. and that is threatening right. that food security as a nation and mm. as a people. Mm -hmm. To that extent, I support him. But the question is, will the government you know, will listen he get to him? Will he needed support? Yes. Will they listen will to him? Will they offer this support? And then will they go ahead to truly ban the Part of aliens. Yes, we've closed borders, but I can tell you uh, categorically that we have over 1,921 uh, borders unmanned. Yes. Unmanned. Now, if we've closed the manned borders, who takes care of the unmanned borders? Mm. Are they not entry and exit points now for all of our characters and activities? So we should be looking beyond those identified borders and maybe focusing attention on those ones that are not either manned mm -hmm. or secured in any manner because they are open to all manner of activities. And that is why mm -hmm. that brings to the question of if we have about 1,900 unmanned borders, how really is this resolving the issues of insecurity? Now that is where the personnel uh, also... As we are so talking uh, here today, okay. I can tell you that smuggling of human beings, it's still of on. arms it's and still, ammunition, right, and all nice. manner of illegalities are still mm -hmm. ongoing. Mm. I agree. It's not a secret. I think I've told you before that we should take a drive to Ogun State angle of that place. And you will be surprised what you will see. Yes. I have been there. The way they move our petroleum products, the way they move a lot of things from here and bring it in from there. I mean, you will be shocked. That how come and how was it possible? So they're so, not doing this without the knowledge of our people. Let's get that clear. They collaborate with them, which for me is, is sabotage, both economic and political sabotage. We do hope that the federal government will look into this and not uh, uh, politicize these well, things because that's, they are that's critical. That's because um, mm. you may have very, very uh, germane ideas, ideas that, that, that's uh, All right. possible that can bring about a uh, soccer, but a politics we, we get in and then it's rubbish. So uh, I just hope that uh, this will also not go the way oh, that others have other gone the past. Other suggestions. Yes, exactly. Well, years <laughs> down the line, it's still <laughs> nascent. Nascent, but even later. <laughs> nascent, later. All right, gentlemen, <laughs> we have to leave it at this point. Charles, thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming yes, to TVC Breakfast. Much. You're watching TVC Breakfast, and we're streaming live on YouTube. You can connect with us on Twitter using the hashtag TVC Breakfast. Still to come on the show.